This is the games of life. The games of life. In this painting, I was depicting uh, the thought that our children, our young people, are like pawns out here on this game board that we call life. And I incorporated Bible scriptures to help drive that point home. In the second chapter of Ephesians, it mentions the authority of the air. The air being our society around us. Who's the authority when we see things like this young man smoking a crack pipe? If he continues to do that, there are only three options available to him that I know of. The bullet hole indicates that someone will kill him. The poison sign indicates that the drug itself will kill him or he's going to wind up in jail. Then we have the babies having babies. She's about 14 years old, very pregnant, still playing with teddy bears and dolls herself, led out by the guiding light, the television, um, soap opera rap video, and now the internet mentality. Then we have our babies with the guns, but his shirt indicates that that's his constitutional right to bear arms. But Matthew 24:12 says that in the last days there would be an increase of lawlessness. Well, I applied that to him because in many cases he ceases to be a loving little baby and grows up to be a gangbanger, a thug. Still somebody's kid, but very dangerous, surrounded by the all too familiar yellow tape, ambulances, and police in the neighborhoods. Then we have these three silhouettes. This one is cut out of a dollar bill. What will they do for a dollar out here today? Second, I mean, 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10 warns about the love of money. This one doesn't have any eyes because this scripture says that they would, the minds of the unbelievers would be blinded by the God of this system of things, Satan the devil. This one has red eyes indicating fierceness because 2 Timothy in the third chapter says in the last days that men would become fierce. Well, how fierce are they? What have our city streets turned into? Drive-by shooting galleries. Everybody out here is a target. You have the gang member, the innocent little boy, the gang member, and the innocent little girl. And then the sex game. I depicted the sex game uh, with a um, slot machine. When you pull the handle on it, what's going to line up for you? Is it going to be AIDS, good sex, or pregnancy? You don't have a clue. On the board game itself, what move they make determines their outcome in life. She's moving into this square, Romans 12, 2, which says, quit being fashioned after this system of things. Plus, she's got her books in her arm, indicating she's getting an education. Those two things together are forming a degree of protection for her against all of this. Her next move would make that shield even stronger, because Exodus 20, 12 says, honor your father and your mother, and your days will be long. Her next move would make that shield permanent. John 17, 3 says, this means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of you, the one and the only true God. Then Psalms 119, 105 mention his word again, where it says, his word is like a lamp to your foot and a light to your pathway. Hebrews 4, 12, and 13 mentions his word as being like a sharp two-edged sword exerting power. And we know that's the only thing going to deal with what we see going on around us today. In the game of chess, the object is to get to your opponent's castle where the king is. In the game of life, the object is to get to God's kingdom, according to Matthew 6.33. This young man hasn't made up his mind yet what move he wants to make. But just like any serious board game that we play, when it's our move, our time starts. In the game of life, your time started when you took your first breath. So from that point on, it's not a matter of whether you want to play the game but what move you make as to whether you survive. And I use female, male, black, and white because everybody has to play the game.